Chapter 3 The Wider Significance of the Swinger Scene Aside from the inherent comedic value, what lessons can be learned from the lower end of the swinger scene? For me, it's a fascinating insight into and confirmation of the existence of the sexual marketplace. What I have observed time and time again by visiting these places is that the sexual marketplace is not only very real, but that it is alive and well and thriving. It is perhaps no surprise to say that the best looking, tallest alpha males clean up with the hottest girls. But it's worth stating simply because too many guys are bedazzled by false promises from the PUA community and think that by learning a few lines from the internet, they can cheat biology. The truth is this. Yes, game can and does put you ahead of 90% of other men, but those men in the top 10% who are naturals and are naturally good looking and great with women are hard to beat. This is why it is important to be realistic, not just when you are attending swingers events, but also when you are doing game and pickup in normal environments too. The harsh truth is that yes, on occasion, you might be able to beat a top tier guy, but most of the time, what you will be doing is upping your own game sufficiently so that you improve your results incrementally rather than astronomically. What going to swingers clubs has taught me over the years is that any false illusion I might have had about women being sweet, innocent snowflakes were just that, illusions. I don't mean to offend anyone by saying that men are not innocent snowflakes either. All human beings are animals out for themselves, simply living by the scripts that have been handed down to them by biology. But it is in swingers clubs where you will most likely see naked female hypergamy, sometimes literally. More than once I have been talking to a girl and doing quite well with her, only for her to off to someone taller, darker, and more handsome than me. Game will open doors for you, and it will sometimes take you all the way, but there are no guarantees. For a long time, I have preferred to think of game as an all-encompassing, all-incorporating self-development, weightlifting, grooming, great dress sense, social calibration, and so on. This is why. You have to attack the challenge holistically. It's no good just learning a few lines. You are not simply competing with other pickup artists, but also with alpha male naturals. You need to raise your game literally in all areas. Omega Men The other thing to note is that the underclass Omega Male actually exists. He is not merely an imaginary online trope. In the saunas, in the porn cinemas, and the strip clubs, as we will discover in the next volume in this series, there are plenty of desperate, degraded men who, having lost all dignity, will lurk in the shadows, waiting for any breadcrumbs they can possibly gather from the sexual banquet that goes on above them. This is very instructive, but also horribly sad. I have no ill will towards such men as Santa or Vern. I just wish they would realize that with work they could raise their game. I also view such guys as a salutary lesson in what to avoid in my own life. Presumably, these men were reasonably fit, fertile, and attractive at one time. Where did it all go wrong? And how can I prevent the same decline? The Omegas who haunt the swinger scene are simply guys who never learned the basics of game in the first place. Not 
that game was necessarily a thing when they were younger, but you know what I mean. They never learned the rudiments of calibrated social interaction, how to flirt, and so on. More importantly, they didn't learn or keep on top of the basics of good grooming, dress, and in some cases, hygiene. There are natural and unavoidable consequences of getting older. Such is the natural way of things. However, it should be feasible to keep on top of those very basic things. And that is what you must do if you don't want to end up like one of these desperate men. Irrespective of whether their condition is self-inflicted, these men naturally find themselves on the bottom rung of the sexual ladder, and they serve as a reminder, if one were needed, that a sexual marketplace does indeed exist, and its rules are iron cast and often cruel. Politically correct, Western culture sells us a Disney-fied idea of love, where it is personality that counts, and where you can fall in love with anyone, regardless of how they look and what they're like socially. The sex clubs show this up for the nonsense that it is. There is a very strict hierarchy in these places based on, yes, looks and build, but also on confidence, social intelligence, power. It should be little surprise to anyone that those at the top of the tree, the guys who score the highest on each of these scales, are the ones who attract the most desirable women, whereas the ones who come near the bottom are left trying to catch the attention of the aesthetically challenged rose. Swingers parties make it obvious that game must include raising your value in every area if you want to have a varied and fulfilling sex life.